my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. My name is Brianna, aka Dollface PA, and thank you for joining. For those of you returning, y'all are so loyal, y'all are so real. I love y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Today, I'm gonna be talking about a hot topic in today's current climate, and that is the COVID vaccine. Yes, yes, yes. If you are straddling the fence on whether or not you should get it, or even if maybe you're you've already gotten it and you still have questions or you're like completely on the other end of the spectrum and you're like, I'm never getting it. All are welcome. So this is the place for you to be. I'm glad you clicked on this link. So a lot of people have been asking me ever since, obviously we're in a global pandemic and a lot of people when they first mentioned that the FDA had approved or done the emergency authorization of Pfizer and Moderna back in December of 2020, my phone was blowing up from family members to friends to people I haven't even really talked to in maybe five, six, seven, ten years were hitting me up. Obviously, knowing that I'm a health professional, just wanting my professional opinion on what they should do. So probably one of the biggest and most frequent questions I have gotten asked over the last five months maybe is, should I get the vaccine? So what I will say is that there is no clear-cut, easy answer to that question. I want to go ahead and throw that out now. So if you were clicking on this link in hopes of getting like a definitive answer from me, it ain't going to happen. So what I will say is that getting the vaccine is a very personal decision. I think that it is very important when making that decision to look at all of the facts, look at the facts, and make an informed decision for yourself. There's no judgment here. I respect everybody's position, everybody's feelings, everybody's thoughts. If you choose to get the vaccine, that's that's great. If you choose not to get the vaccine, that's fine as well. That is your that's your right and that is your position. And it's either way it's fine. Um it be, it becomes a very controversial topic. Some people feel very very strongly about it one way, other people feel very very strongly about it the other way. What I will say is that the question that you have to ask yourself is, are you more afraid of what could happen to you if you get the vaccine or are you more afraid of what could happen to you if you get COVID? That's a question that only you can answer. Obviously, as a healthcare provider, I was one of the first people to get vaccinated. Um, I, too, was very, very on the fence about it. I was very scared. I just want to be completely honest and transparent in saying that because I think sometimes it's easy for, you know, everyday people to just think that because we're medical providers that we were just, oh, yeah, pro vaccine. Let's go get the vaccine. Give me the jab. Oh, yeah, I'm first in line. And that is not at all the reality. Um, when the FDA did the um, emergency authorization in December, I remember them saying at our hospital, it got approved on a Friday night. And they were saying that we were going to have doses as early as Tuesday. And I'm like, I only have the weekend to make a decision? Oh, my goodness. And so, thankfully, like, it was never mandated by my job to, you know, you have to get it. It still remains an option and a choice for all of the employees. But I was very much so of the opinion of, I don't want to be the first person to get this vaccine. Like, it literally just came out basically Friday. Well, not just came out because obviously they were doing clinical trials like all throughout the year. But in my mind, I'm just walking you guys through how I was thinking. I'm thinking like, you mean to tell me this vaccine just got approved on Friday and you want to give it to me on Tuesday? Uh-uh, I think not. So I actually did not get the vaccine right away. A lot of my coworkers did. Everybody was fine. I let a little bit of time go by. I got my vaccine in, in January, got my first one in January, got my second one in um, February. And so, you know, I would go back and forth. I would be like, oh, like, okay, maybe I'll get it. But then like I would be at work and I would be like, oh, I can go upstairs right now and get it if I want to. And I would just be so scared. A lot of, you know, women of childbearing age, which I am, I've never had children yet. And a lot of women of childbearing age, women that are pregnant, women that are trying to get pregnant, women that are breastfeeding, you know, a lot of concerns are there and they're valid. And that was certainly one of my concerns. Everybody, you know, I hear a lot of time like this is so new. What does this mean for me in the future? Is it going to affect my ability to have children? What I would say is that there is a lot of research and they have come out with 
Research that has shown that women who have taken the vaccine have still been able to have babies. Women who have breastfed with the vaccine have been fine. Their babies have been fine. Women have not had any trouble getting pregnant as a result of the vaccine. That is what the data has shown. And I encourage women, if you have specific concerns or questions about that, to talk to your doctor about it. And if there's nothing wrong with asking your doctor, are you able to show me data that you know, basically proves what you are saying, which is that this is safe for me to get. There's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you need to feel comfortable, then you should feel empowered to ask for whatever resources will help you feel comfortable to make that decision if you choose to get the vaccine. If you don't want to get it, you don't have to get it. It's a free country. And so I'm just giving a little bit of background of what my thoughts and my concerns were. I was worried about that. Obviously, I'm not a mother yet. I do want to be a mother one day, but I'm not a mother yet um and I would probably say that was probably my biggest fear when I was like going back and forth on whether or not I was going to get the vaccine I'm like oh my gosh and then obviously you hear about the very rare cases where people have had like reactions to the vaccine or um some people have passed away and those were fears in my mind as well and so ultimately, the thing that made me decide to get the vaccine, it was actually a very um, sporadic decision. I was literally sitting at work one day. My shift was about to end in like 45 minutes. And I was like, I'm going upstairs to get the vaccine. And the reason why I had this like abrupt change in my stance on the vaccine was because I began to have like this moral injury I started to feel really bad about the fact that I was encouraging everybody in my family to take the vaccine. I'm telling my parents to get it, my grandparents to get it, my aunts, my uncles, everybody like y'all have to get vaccinated. Y'all have to get vaccinated. But then on the in the same breath, I'm saying, but I'm scared to take the vaccine. I began to feel very hypocritical and I just had like uh, I was having like a moral crisis. I'm like. How can you tell the people that you love the most to take the vaccine, but you're afraid to take it? And that just really didn't sit well with me. And I think it kind of just clicked in my head. And I was like, you know what? That's not right. And if I'm going to tell them to take it, then I have, I have to be the example. Like I have to set the example. So I went upstairs and I got my vaccine. I was scared. My heart was pounding. Oh my, I was so scared. And I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell my mom, my boyfriend, my dad, nobody, nobody knew. I didn't want to tell anybody until after I got it done because I didn't want anybody to talk me out of it. I was already so like on the fence about it that I knew if somebody that I cared about, such as my parents, got in my ear and even like made a little bit of a suggestion, I may change my mind about it. So it was a decision that I made for myself. I am very, very happy with my decision to get vaccinated. I want to go on record and say what you choose to do is your own decision. I am not shaming anybody who does who decides that they absolutely do not want it. Everybody has their own reasons and I respect everybody's thoughts and opinions on it. Um, but I do believe that it's important to get the facts. A lot of the things that I hear about the vaccine are just simply outrageous, honestly. Um, you know, I hear like, I've heard people say things such as, oh, the uh, more people are getting like bad reactions from the vaccine than they are from COVID. Basically saying that like, you might as well just take your chances with COVID because the reaction from the vaccine is going to be so bad. That is insane. Like that's an insane statement to make. And I think it's like very <laughs> uh, outraging to hear things like that because obviously we see people die every day from COVID and we see how bad and severe COVID is. I don't really think that it's fair to parallel that to fever, chills, and the headache that you may have for 24 hours after getting the vaccine. And so that's craziness. Um, another thing that I hear, what do people say? Um, you know, some people are just against vaccines entirely. That's totally fine. If that's your position, that's where you stand. Um, but the one thing I don't really understand, you know, <laughs> I don't know if I should say this. I've heard African Americans specifically say like, oh, the government is just trying to test yet another vaccine on black people. 
you do realize that everybody in the United States is getting this same vaccine, right? And I love y'all, y'all my people, but that's just an uninformed statement. If the government was trying to kill black people, they could find a lot of other easier ways to do it than mass producing a vaccination that they're giving everybody in the United States, including Hispanics, Asians, whites. It just, it's absurd. And it, I think it's so upsetting because African-Americans are at a higher risk for death if they get the, if they get COVID. And so it's like, we are the ones that need the vaccine the most. And I feel like a lot of the skepticism in the African-American community, understandably so, it, a lot of people are very skeptical about it because they think that, you know, there's some conspiracy that the government is doing, trying to hurt our people. I want to debunk that myth. That is not true. If you choose to get the vaccine, if you choose not to get the vaccine for another reason, that's totally fine. But please do not let the reason that you're not getting the vaccine be because you think the government is trying to kill black people. That is almost an embarrassing statement to say. Don't say that. Don't say that. And so I want to debunk that. I'm trying to think. I really want to debunk a lot of the myths. In terms of my side effects for the vaccine, I was very blessed. I didn't have any side effects. I had a sore arm the same way I had a sore arm if you, like when you get the flu vaccine, it feel like somebody punched you in the arm. That was for about 24 hours. I was very tired, but I'm always tired because I'm always working. So I don't know if I was just tired from work or if I was just tired from the vaccine. But either way, the next day I felt fine. Same thing with my um, second vaccine. I was completely fine. Um, let me see. I don't want to get too much into like the statistics about the effectiveness of each vaccine because I don't want want it to seem like I'm promoting one vaccine over the other. I got the Pfizer. Um yeah, so I mean I the vaccines are safe and the vaccines are effective. That is what I will say. If you choose to get the vaccine, um I think it's a good move. If you choose not to, that's okay too. Um, I am very happy that I got the vaccine. I feel a lot safer now with it. Obviously, I'm still smart. I still wear my mask, even though the CDC said you can take it off. I'm not taking my mask off. I live in New York City. There's so many people on the subway. I'm not taking my mask off. Not yet. I know future said mask off, but not yet. So, you know, there's that. I feel safe around my family. Everyone in my family has been vaccinated now. So it's such a beautiful thing to be able to gather with them safely and not like have this fear in my heart of like, oh my goodness, what if I get my parents sick or, you know, nobody wants to deal with that. So I am very happy that I got the vaccine. Um, I do truly believe that the vaccine is our saving grace in this pandemic. We've obviously been in the fight for well over a year now and we never really came up with any effective life-saving treatments for the actual virus. So the best thing is gonna be prevention. And the way to do that is gonna be with the vaccine. And thankfully we are even seeing now, like following the trends, the numbers are coming down and they are attributing that to mass, vaccin mass vaccination. I haven't looked at the numbers recently, but when I had last checked, I think they said 47% of all Americans had at least one dose. That is incredible. That's incredible. You know, I think it's a very touchy subject. Um, so I'm trying to be very sensitive to people who are still very much so against or on the fence about it. In terms of children, they have just recently approved it from ages 12 to 17, I believe, which is great. Um, take the time to think about it. Okay, so I actually wanted to pause right here because um, I realized after I filmed this video that there was something very important that I forgot to touch on. One of the major questions that I get asked is, if I've already had COVID, should I get the vaccine? And what I will say is that the most recent data shows that the antibodies that your body produced after having COVID are not long lasting. Some last only three months. Some last longer than that, but the truth is they don't know how long natural immunity lasts and they don't think that the immunity from your 
um, natural immune response is nearly as superior as the immunity that the vaccine offers. To complicate this even more, there are several different variants of COVID that are out now. And so the strain that you had could very well be a different strain that is uh, predominantly circulating now. And so you do run the risk of being reinfected. I just wanna say that. This is a question that I got from somebody who has not received the vaccine. Excuse me. They said, oh, well, now that like the numbers are coming down, like, why do I even need to get the vaccine? Like community transmission is theoretically going to be so low that my chances of contracting it, whether I'm vaccinated or not, should be very low. And I do understand that thought process, but I also think it's important to understand that you're still vulnerable to getting it. Like there, the transmission rate is not zero. The pandemic is not over. COVID is still circulating in the community. People do still have COVID. And so if you're not vaccinated, you're at a much higher chance of getting it as opposed to somebody that has been vaccinated, albeit that chance may be low, the chance is still there. So it really is just a question you have to ask yourself, how much of a chance are you willing to take? Some people are like, look, if it means that I don't have to get the vaccine and the chance of me getting COVID anyways is low because the community transmission rate is going down, I'm okay with taking that risk. And if that's your stance, that's fine. You have to make the decision that you feel comfortable with, that you feel comfortable sleeping at night. You know, I think this whole vaccination thing became a lot more political than it needed to be. As a healthcare worker, I can only speak for myself, but for me, it was always about saving lives. I knew that the more people that got vaccinated, the less people would die. It was like that clear cut, that black and white for me. Like, you could, you know, bring politics into it if you want to. But from my perspective, that's truly how I see it. That's my heart on the matter, because obviously we don't want our patients to die. We don't want anybody to die. We don't want our loved ones to die, our friends, our family. And this has been a very deadly disease. So that's kind of my piece on this. I try to keep it as surface level as possible. Um, trying to think if I have any resources to maybe share with people. If you have any specific questions I'm probably just going to direct you to your doctor, honestly, because I mean, I just think that this is such a touchy topic for women who are pregnant or trying to get pregnant or, oh, should I vaccinate my child? He has a, a autoimmune disease. Like you need to ask your doctor about those things. I am a healthcare worker. I am a provider, but you need to ask your doctor who knows your history about those things. But if you have general questions about the vaccine, I would be happy to answer those. So you can hit me up in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this video. Turn on post notifications on too. So when I post a new video, you'll get the notification. You guys can hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, or, oh, that's all I have. Twitter, Instagram, or you can email me, all of which are in the description box. Thank you guys for tuning on. Love you guys. I actually, another thing, don't really know what I want to talk about next. I'm kind of running out of things to talk about. So if you have any suggestions for anything that you want to know about or anything that you want me to talk about, just leave it in the comments and I'll be sure to do that because I'm kind of coming to a point where I'm um, hitting a little wall on things I want to talk about. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. Y'all be blessed. Stay, stay safe and stay COVID free. I love you. Bye.